So with my animals back home in South Carolina being cared for graciously by my cousin, I'm down here in Florida visiting family for the holidays with some time to kill. Hence the background of a kitchen and not of turtles. So while looking around for reptile places, you know, aquarium stores to check out and tour, I found this place, Floating Sea Aquatics. So you know how in Japan they have like cat cafes or like different exotic animal cafes. And so it turns out that this place is also an aquarium cafe. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I gotta go check this out. But as it turns out, it is way, way, more than that. Let's go find out. What? Don't worry, guys. Now it's hailing. You hear that? Hail. With wall-to-wall -wall aquariums to my left and right, naturalistic looking ones, and reggae playing in the background, as soon as I walk into the place, the vibes are immaculate. There's this beautiful planted aquarium with a bunch of smaller tetras to my right. This place is beautiful. This little crayfish is hanging out. I see all these loaches, wall-to-wall -wall aquariums. Just at a first glance, this place is a freaking paradise. And better yet, one of the employees came over to give me a tour of the entire facility. All the aquariums that you see all the way, all the way around you, the two 4,000 gallon ponds that are right here, it's all meant for rescue as well as education. A lot of people, they want to build an aquarium in their home, make it look as natural and beautiful as possible. They have absolutely no idea how to get started. So here at Floating Sea Aquatics, we actually focus a lot more on the self-sustaining biosystems, the aquariums that really are natural more than anything, right? So fake plants, fake all that stuff, we really don't have much of it. It's really more of the um, naturalistic plants, the proper substrates. We try to teach our, our customers about layering, right? The yeah. proper bacteria layers yeah, and everything yeah, on yeah. the substrate. Absolutely. All the way around, we have different types of aquariums. We have South American cichlids, fancy goldfish, brackish water, your singular flower horn, right? Because everyone <laughs> wants a him. beautiful flower horn. I but... love him, yeah. So this guy here, he's always personal with everyone. He'll come right up. The kids absolutely adore him at all times. He's always chasing around. This is our loach tank right here. So we have different types of loaches, yo-yo loach, clown mm -hmm. loach, dojo. Behind you, we have our small micro fish tank. All of these tanks just serve as different purposes. And on top of that, all of the fish that you see have all been rescued. We have not purchased any of the fish that you see anywhere around. Not only that, but none of the tanks have been purchased. Everything that you see here has been donated 100% by our community. Mm -hmm. So these tanks, act as an educational source, but as well as a way for us to house these fish that need to be rescued, right? I couldn't put these micro fish in the ponds because in the ponds, we've got our giant Oscars, <laughs> other South American cichlids. Unfortunately, we do have a mixture of different fish like African cichlids in here as well and koi. But that's just because we're still starting. It's 4,000 gallons of water. We watch all the fish slowly every single day when we get them rescued. So we make sure there's not too much aggression. Everyone here has been doing fine. And then of course our 4,000 gallon saltwater pond is my personal favorite. In here I have two different puffers, a stars and stripe puffer. This is E.T. E.T. is a porcupine puffer. Extremely personable. I hand feed everyone here. This is our French angel, our unicorn tang. So all of these fish, as you can see, eat right out of our fingers. Mm -hmm. I feed them on a daily basis. I've got two sharks in here, an epaulette shark, as well as a bamboo shark. Everything, like I said, rescued to us. So next week, or the week after, yeah, next week we, got we are going to be receiving a six foot moray eel. It's roughly at about, yeah, 12 to 16 inches. We are truly, truly blessed by the people here. Before we continue the video, a quick word from our sponsors. And by our, I mean me, and by sponsors, I mean my own ad. Do you like turtles? Do you not want these turtles to starve? Then become a member on my Patreon today. Patrons get access to all kinds of exclusive content, including behind the scenes photos, bonus videos, turtles when I have them available, and so much more. Direct message me with all of your turtle related questions, and I'll walk you through how best to care for your turtle, or just come say hi. Join my Patreon today and get access to over 300 bonus content posts. 
These are the micro tanks. When I was a kid, the only people who had salt water aquariums were people who had too much time on their hand, too much money available. But nowadays, things are much different. People have experimented a lot more in the past couple decades, and they've been able to figure out how to have micro salt water aquariums. So this one here is 14.5.7 gallons, and this one's less than three. There's coral thriving in here, but we're able to teach our community about keeping these now at home. It's much easier to have your office salt water tank. Our cafe is open five days a week. We call it a cafe, but really it's a full on restaurant. Soups, pasta, salads, uh -huh. sandwiches, lunches, dinner. We have events on Fridays and Saturday nights. Once a month, we hold Face Your Fear for the Adults. It is an, a reptile and insect educational show. It allows the older community who have been instilled with fear of these animals to understand that they saw some misunderstanding. I, I hang out with that everyone while, while they're having dinner, drinks, and then once I'm done talking about it, if they have the courage to try their hand out at handling, then they have the opportunity. So it's great photo opportunities. An amazing date night. This is the entire community center, right? So over here I actually have some cichlid tanks to teach people about the African cichlids. The rest of the shop is our retail. Uh, over here on the left, we've got the reptile department. We've got our Sumatran water monitors right there. They're actually extremely amazing. We hand, hand feed everyone here, so they have no fear of human contact. These are our little friends. So these little guys are gonna grow roughly about six, seven feet long. Some have reached above eight. They're like little dogs. They're like That's little dogs. Crazy. We don't force handle, uh -huh. which is a big, big thing that yes. people will mistake on. Is yes. they'll want to grab the animal and teach it to be okay with me, but that's not how it works, like, right? Shut up and love me. Yeah, it exactly. Does not work. That's not how it works <laughs> at all. Uh, so we've got our invertebrate area right here. Oh yes. Here we've got tailless yes. whip scorpions, tarantula, scor regular scorpions. We got our vampire crabs or the moon crabs right there. One thing that we were lucky to have here mm -hmm. is our prohibited species license. We are able to house things like Buttercup here, our 13-foot Burmese python. We've got the 8-foot Burmese python over there. We've got a couple of tegus, some Nile monitors. These are animals that have been uh, deemed prohibited by the general public to possess here in the state of Florida because of their invasiveness or aggression. But we, while working with the Florida Wildlife Commission, are able to house them to use them for educational purposes. So on Saturdays, every single Saturday at 12 o'clock, we have an art class. After that art class, which lasts roughly about an hour. We do reptile handling. I pull out everything from buttercup to um, the seven foot mile, or the, the four foot Nile monitor over here. So Quill here is a new resident that we got in recently. I'm still working with him, but he is at this point handleable. I'm leash training him at the moment. He's doing phenomenal on that, actually. I was able to walk him throughout the entire facility on the leash with a harness. He didn't give me any issues. Behind me, that's our reef. Still growing. We just revamped it, which is why the tanks are completely empty. But by end of February, we are looking to have this look absolutely beautiful with different displays of coral reef. Actually, you know what's actually cool? Where we're standing is our freshwater aquascape section. This entire area right here right is nothing but different types of driftwood below is nothing but different types of stone and then behind me is nothing but different types of substrate so one issue that people will have is they buy a piece of driftwood or some rock mm -hmm. and it doesn't fit in the aquarium right yeah. and then your store tells you well did you submerge it in the water yes i did i fit it in and it doesn't work well now we can't take it back it's an unfortunate fact about the, this industry so to counteract that we have the adult sandbox. I have pre-built frames for your standard aquarium sizes that you can put right here on the sandbox and design your entire aquarium here before ever taking it home. Our employees, uh, for the most part, are trained and are still working and learning to build the aquariums the exact same style that we have mm -hmm. in the front. If you were to come in, bring your actual aquarium here and ask for us to aquascape it with you, we'll do it at no cost. Spend an hour or two with you, make it as beautiful, as self-sustaining as possible, and then send you home with it. It's really that's, a lot of fun. That's incredible. It's uh, it's definitely one of my favorite <laughs> things to do here for sure. So this right here is our retail section for our freshwater and saltwater, and then these are my two favorite tanks here. I, turtles. Yeah. I'm a Chelonian guy. Like yeah, that's the whole channel's turtles. That's all I keep. That's <laughs> Dude, all that's I cool. do. Turtle man. Turtle man. <laughs> cool yeah, man. It's everything. So in here, I've got your reefs turtle, your southern painted turtle. I've had some beautiful albino red ears. Those are freaking good choices to, to 
have yes. available because they are not going to get huge. Those are not. You know, what's that, funny is uh, yeah. the first question that gets asked when someone asks me, "Do you have any turtle for sale?" It's, "Do you own your own property?" Sounds like a silly question. I love it. It's one of the reasons why I have the stink pot musk turtle. I always have variety yes, of musk turtles yes, yes. for your homes, your painted turtle. Again, you can still work with it with a large aquarium for your home. Uh -huh. But for the most part, we don't keep any yellow belly sliders in stock as babies. We don't keep any of the cooters, especially not the cooters. Yeah. Um, oh. Because <laughs> people will buy them then, as you know, five, 10 years down the yep. line, you've yep. got this massive turtle in a tiny 150, maybe 75 gallon aquarium that's not happy. We do work with our, with our customers about that. We try to educate them as much as possible about the animal that they're wanting to take home. I always tell people, if you come in here, spend an hour with me and go home without buying something, that's actually better hey, for okay. me because yeah. that means you didn't make a silly mistake impulse and decision. an impulse decision, yeah. right? Parents will come in with their child and be like, oh, I want to buy him a turtle. And I'll sit down in front of the kid I'm like, you see how old I am, buddy? You're gonna be this old and you're still taking care of that pet. How do you feel about that? And their face drops yeah. like, what? We're all about the education here. A lot less on the actual selling of any of these animals, more so on wanting you to learn what mm -hmm. you're taking home. Our freshwater area is what takes over most of the retail fish section. We've only got a small salt water area. That's only because we really don't want to feed in the yeah. destruction of our coral reef, right? More than 75% of your saltwater fish are still taken from the reef. So we reduce that by only having two aisles and the rest is just our fresh water. We do have our laboratory, our free rescue, because we do take in uh, fish and reptiles mm -hmm. and we house them for free for our community, say if they're going out of town for a week or two. Even if the animal is sick, we have our free hospitalization. Now, of course, none of us are experts. We are hobbyists. Yes. We are, we are passionate people. So it's with an understanding that we we are going to do the best that we can. But for someone who doesn't have the five to $700 to help their bearded dragon who may just have a little bit of MBD or something, we will do our best to do what we can to get that animal back on track. That's how this entire industry got to where it's at. Exactly. Now, this video is literally not sponsored. I just feel so passionately about this location that I feel the need to add this at the end of the video. Floating Sea Aquatics was more than an aquarium shop. It was more than a reptile store. It was more than a cafe. It truly was greater than the sum of its parts. This location was quite literally everything that I think that every aquarium shop should strive to be. The staff were all extremely knowledgeable about a variety of different topics, be it fish, plants, saltwater aquariums, reptiles. And at the end of the day, it's super important to me that this place was so focused on education more so than making a sale. I see all too often in reptile shops, aquarium stores, places that are really just more focused on staying afloat, <laughs> no pun intended, rather than actually educating and making sure that people have a pet that is truly right for them. Floating Sea Aquatics is simply not like that. The fact that they're willing to go the extra mile above and beyond for you and your animals, only selling turtles that won't get extraordinarily large, taking in rescues of multiple different species. It absolutely blows my mind that a place like this can even exist. And it gives me hope as to what more reptile shops, fish stores can strive to be in the future. Overall, I had an absolutely wonderful time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Floating Sea Aquatics for having me, and I'll see you all in the next one.